And you would think this is science fiction, but it's not. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie with Reason TV, and today we're talking with Peter Y. Marshausen of Shapeways, uh, a 3D printing company. Elaborate on what you do. You create things out of 3D printing. Let's say I have an idea for a product. How does Shapeways help me make that? Well, Shapeways is an online community and marketplace uh, for people to bring their ideas to life. Mm -hmm. So how do we help? Well, it depends on who you are. If you are looking for the perfect gift or mm -hmm. if you're looking for a great product, you can visit our website and there is like hundreds of thousands of products that people have created. Thousands of those you can customize and mm -hmm. then if you like it, then you can buy it and we make it just in time. We make mm -hmm. it on demand for right. you. I mean, it's kind of like Zazzle or something with t-shirts or shoes. I mean, there, you, among other things, you have a marketplace of things that have already been done that people can pick and say, okay, do it like this and then you'll send it to them. Yes, and yeah. then we make it, and this mm -hmm. is where the magic starts, of right. course. We make it using 3D printers. Right. And that is, enables us to make custom products mm -hmm. almost as efficiently as we would make mass production. We talk a little bit about that. Like, what kinds of products can you make? Could you make an air conditioner if I design that and send it to me? Or are you doing more um, kind of smaller scale trinkets, objet d'art, things like that? Well, currently, most 3D printing technology, the ones that we offer, uh, use only one material. Mm -hmm. So. An air conditioner is not okay. right in the realm of possibilities, right. but you can make things like jewelry, you can mm. make all kinds of things that consist of one material. Right. Who are some of your clients and what are, what are some of the things beyond what you just mentioned that you're making for them? We are both for people who are looking for something cool mm -hmm. for, for themselves, but also if you are a maker and you can use 3D software, mm -hmm. you can create anything in that software, upload it to us and we'll make it for you. Right. Uh, besides that, uh, if you wanna use that what you've created and you think it serves a purpose or it solves a problem, mm -hmm. you can start selling that on Shapeways to a, to a worldwide so audience. What, you said that something like an air conditioner is kind of beyond the capability of the technology now. And so, I mean, I know that 3D printing is a kind of lazy analogy of what you're doing because it's really manufacturing, but are we in kind of, we're in kind of the dot matrix era of 3D printing and how long will it be before you can do something like an air conditioner or an automobile engine or something you like know, that? 3D printing has been around for quite a while, mm -hmm. but it has been used in a very limited scope. 3D printing initially was used for prototyping mm -hmm. of products that then were later on mass produced. That happened for since the late 1980s mm -hmm. up until like maybe you know 2005, six or so, and then slowly but surely, uh, you know, it's been used for final products. Right. Now, as I mentioned, it's only in final products in those materials. Mm -hmm. But what is happening because it's adaptation, because more and more people mm -hmm. learn about this, and more and more people start to use it. The guys who are making the printers themselves, those industrial type machines, they start to listen to the demands and they are improving their machines, mm -hmm. hopefully in an increasingly uh, fast rate. Right. So the questions that come in translate into requirements and the machines get better. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things, like going back to your question about the air conditioner, uh, one of the things that I'm really excited about is that multi-material is already possible. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we're definitely looking at is how can you make products composed of multiple materials and then this, the next step, if one of those materials is a semiconductor, you can start making electrical appliances. Right. Now you would think this is science fiction, but it's not. How do you think uh, 3D uh, printing will, uh, will change the future of shopping? Well, first of all, um, a nice quote I heard today from, uh, from someone is that, um, you know, if you're really exposed to the power that this gives you, that, mm -hmm. the, that you know, a platform like Shapeways gives you, you get bored with the normal mass-produced goods. Mm -hmm. I like that. And, um, and it's true, because now all of a sudden you can be involved. You can put your name on something, you mm -hmm. can change the shape of something, you can change the material used, mm -hmm. and it empowers our users. You know, the end user benefits because right. the amount of choice in what you can get will let increase. Me, uh, let me flip that economy of scale. So the, the first object is not, um, you, you know, it used in traditional manufacturing, the first object might be a million dollars and then the second one is only a hundred dollars. But if the same unit cost for production is the same all the way down, does that mean that there's no economy of scale here? If your thousandth cup costs the, the same as, as, as the first cup to make? Well, there is economy of scale, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter what you're making. Mm -hmm. So it's more the amount of stuff you're making mm -hmm. that makes possible for, okay. for companies like Shapeways mm -hmm. to, to set up uh, smart processes to drive down costs. Right. You know, if you have 10 machines and a few people running them, that's obviously more economical than one machine with one guy running right. it. 
and then if you automate certain things around those processes, you get okay. better cost efficiencies as well. What does uh, 3D printing mean for companies, say, like Walmart, which is the 800-pound the gorilla in retail, uh, and which is based on really tightly understanding its supply chain and doing things in a very efficient way? What, what happens now with 3D printing? I think that 3D printing can um, offer people different alternatives. Mm -hmm. And uh, as always, when things are totally different, uh, if there are you know, addressing the right needs, then this will be uh, you know, something that is of interest to Walmart to, to look right. at, obviously. Mm -hmm. How they address that, I don't know. That's right. up to them to decide. Um, but I think what we see is that we empower the end user much mm -hmm. more than just by going to a store and pick something that is available on a shelf. Right. We enable people to be involved in the products. Mm -hmm. And I think they like what, that. What's the, what's the product? Do you have a kind of holy grail product that, you, you know, that you'll know, okay, I finally reached the end point when I've, when I've produced this thing? I don't think there is an end point. I mean, mm -hmm. um, it's about like music. It, it, songs keep coming out. I mean, we have written so many songs, as, you know, so many songs have been written and still great new songs come out. The same will happen to product mm -hmm. and the same will happen to technology. It will get better and better. Actually, I think what we want to do as Shapeways is not be about 3D printing, mm -hmm. but be about empowering people to get products they want. Well, we'll end it there. I want to thank Peter Weimarshausen, Weimarshausen, excuse me, of, of Shapeways a 3D printing firm based in New York. For Reason TV, I'm Nick Gillespie.